Good evening, family. Welcome to our final session of Serve of the Bible. It's been an interesting eight weeks. We've learned so much. we gained so much knowledge about the Word of God. Our hearts is that this Word doesn't only sit here, but comes into your hearts and be part of your life and be part of who you are. Because the origin of the fear of the Lord, and not fear like and scared, but fear like and respect, is knowledge. And that's what we gained over these last eight weeks. We gained the knowledge of the Word of God. We invite you to enjoy this last session. And please share this eight weeks with your friends, your family, if they can gain anything from this. Enjoy the session. Welcome to the 10 periods of the New Testament. After learning the 10 New Testament periods, we're going to bring everything together and show how the New Testament places fit in the periods, and then the New Testament books on either side, how they fit on the periods. And finally, we're going to stack the New Testament people on top of the books that are on top of the period. Remember, the New Testament spans about a hundred years, then focuses on Jesus Christ, his apostles, and his church. And we're going to do that only in 10 periods. Period number one is the early life of Jesus that begins with Joseph and Mary traveling to Bethlehem where Christ is born and the visits by the shepherds and the wise men. Remember, they eventually go down to Egypt and back up to Nazareth where Jesus grows up as the son of a carpenter. And at 12 years old, remember, he goes down to Jerusalem. He astounds the religious leaders in the temple, and uh, he grows up until he's at least 30 years old before his public ministry begins. Period number one, the early life of Jesus. The next key person that happens is period number two, and it's about John the Baptist, and it's the ministry of John the Baptist. It describes the ministry of a close relative of Jesus who fulfills the Old Testament prophecies that Christ was going to have somebody that came before he did to prepare the way for him called John the Baptist. John, he preaches repentance to the entire nation of Israel and he baptizes many, including Jesus Christ. And he declares that the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Well, John is eventually imprisoned and he's beheaded by Herod. Period number two is the ministry of John the Baptist. Well, now we go back and we continue the story of Jesus. Period number three the ministry of Jesus, and it spans uh, about three years. After his baptism, Jesus is tempted by Satan, teaches Nicodemus about the new birth, calls his 12 apostles, delivers many sermons, many parables, including his very famous Sermon on the Mount, and he's busy training his disciples and sending them out two by two. There are so many things you could say about Jesus. I mean, there's four whole books in there. Jesus walks on the water, remember? He experiences the transfiguration. He states he's the Son of God and proves it over and over again with 37 major miracles, including raising Lazarus from the dead. I mean, it was shocking. But the religious leaders, you know, the high priests, Sadducees, Pharisees, and the scribes officially rejects Jesus, and they reject his offer to be the king of the Jews. But Jesus prophesies in response repeatedly that although he's going to be killed, he will rise again from the dead. Early life of Jesus, ministry of John the Baptist, ministry of Jesus, and then the rest of it takes place at the end of Christ's life, which fills much of the four Gospels. There's these two last periods. Period number four is the trials and the crucifixion of Jesus. And it takes place in the last week, beginning with his triumphant entry, in his famous prophecy sermon about his second coming, Jesus and his disciples celebrate the Passover in the upper room, including the announcement of the new covenant by his shed blood. You remember Jesus experiences deep grief in Gethsemane and the betrayal by Judas. Jesus suffers through numerous trials, and Peter denies him three times. But Jesus is declared innocent by Pilate. Jesus is then brutally beaten, crucified, and buried in a borrowed tomb, and that ends period number four. Period number five is the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus. This is really 
joined together, but we've separated because it's very different. The resurrection and the ascension uh, spans about 40 days. After his crucifixion, when Jesus Christ is resurrected, ministers, teaches, and then goes back up to heaven. During this period, Jesus teaches extensively on the kingdom of God. And he meets a lot of times with his disciples, including helping doubting Thomas to become believing, and appears to over 500 people, proving that his resurrection was absolutely true and undeniable. Then Jesus restores Peter after his three denials and gives to his followers the great commission to take the gospel to all the peoples of the world and to teach what he has taught them. Jesus finally ascends into heaven when the disciples watch, promising to come back down at a future time. Well, that's it. That's the story about Jesus. If you take it and put it in half like this, it's kind of like this. This is the early life of Jesus, then John the Baptist, and the ministry of Jesus, and then the end of his life, the trials and the crucifixion, and the resurrection and the ascension. And now, in a sense, you stop, and a brand new beginning takes place in the book of Acts. Period number six is the birth of the church to the particular group of people known as the Jews. And it takes place in Acts chapter 1 through 7 with the coming of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost where Peter preaches and 3,000 people are born again. That's, in a sense, the birth of the church. And the Old Covenant under the Old Testament of law transitions to the New Covenant of grace for everybody who put their faith in Jesus Christ. Well, the apostles preach and perform many miracles, but the religious leaders remain viciously opposed to the gospel and even martyr Stephen just for his sermon about Jesus. So think about the birth of the church, and it focuses on the Jews. Well, surprisingly, it goes beyond the Jews. Not surprisingly to us today, but back in that day, the Jews didn't think that uh, it was going to go beyond them. But period number seven is the spread of the church, and it spreads to the Samaritans. And it takes place in Acts chapter 8 through 12, with the unexpected spread of the gospel to the half-Jews that we've talked about, known as the Samaritans. In this period, Philip, he's active in evangelism and leads the Ethiopian to Christ. Paul is also converted on the road to Damascus at this time and begins his widespread ministry. Period number eight is the missionary journey even further from Jerusalem, where the Jews were, out to Samaritans, and now even further away from Jerusalem to where the Gentiles. And they then become part of the church. And it takes place in this period right here for approximately 10 years. In Acts chapter 13 through 20, as Paul shares the gospel to the Gentiles who run and accept Christ with joy. And Paul travels on three missionary journeys, plants many churches, writes lots of New Testament books, but he has lots of opposition as he's beaten and he's whipped many times by the Jewish opponents. But thankfully, Paul's faith remains strong, and the gospel just spreads victoriously. Well, period number nine is the end of Paul's life. It's Paul's trials and his imprisonment and ultimately his death. And it takes place in Acts chapter 21 to 28 and covers maybe oh, about eight years. The opposition and the hostility by those same Jewish leaders didn't end with the crucifixion of Jesus, but grows against the apostles. And Paul goes through various trials with leaders like Felix and Festus and Agrippa before he's sent to Rome and imprisoned. And after the book of Acts ends, so you wouldn't know about this in Acts, Paul is released from that Roman prison for a number of years, but then he's imprisoned a second time in Rome where he dies. Finally is the 10th period. That's where we're living today, in a sense. The 10th period continues to this moment. is a global expansion all the way to eternity, and it takes place after the death of the Apostle Paul as the remaining apostles and disciples spread the gospel to the world. And the Apostle John writes the book of Revelation spanning the second coming all the way to the New Jerusalem and into eternity. I want to take the last five and kind of divide it like this, just like we did with the first five. This is all about the birth of the Church of the Jews, 
the spread of the church to half Jews, known as the Samaritans, and the spread of the church to the Gentiles. And then the person who was so key in here is the Apostle Paul. He has his trials and he has his imprisonment and he dies. And then all the rest of the apostles take over and they spread the church all over the world. Let's right now trace these 10 periods of the New Testament on our map behind us. Well, as you know, the places of the New Testament were divided into the Gospels and Acts and the Epistles. So watch for all 22 New Testament places you've already learned. Period number one, the early life of Jesus. As you know, Jesus was born in Bethlehem, down over here, and he travels to Egypt because of the threat of Herod comes back up and returns to Nazareth, which is up here, where he grows up. At 12 years old, he travels down to Jerusalem, which is here, and he astounds the religious leaders with his knowledge of the scripture. Do you have this? Sea of Galilee, Jordan River, Dead Sea, Mediterranean, the Nile River. It all takes place right in here. Then comes the ministry of John the Baptist, which occurs right along the Jordan River as he baptizes many people in the Jordan River and identifies Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Then you go back to Jesus. And the ministry of Jesus takes place in Galilee up here, the middle part is called Samaria, the bottom part called Judea, and right over here is called Perea. These four areas is where Christ spends most of his time. He makes a little bit of walks up here and a little bit over here, but mostly in Galilee, Samaria, Judea, and Perea. And he performs his first miracle of turning water into wine over here in Cana and eventually establishes his headquarters in a town right on the edge of the Sea of Galilee called Capernaum. I've been there many times. It's right there where he performs many of his miracles and preaches lots of his famous sermons. And then uh, later on in his ministry, he travels down here to Jericho where he heals blind Bartimaeus, meets with Zacchaeus, and spends time with his friends in Bethany, just a little bit south of Jerusalem, the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, who Jesus raises from the dead. So he's up and down. There's no real pattern here, because he makes numerous trips. Every year, a godly Jew had to come to Jerusalem once, if not three times, for the major feasts. And all those times, he's teaching and preaching and training until finally the nation rejects Jesus. And we have the trials and crucifixion period, which takes place right there in Jerusalem, right near uh, Jericho, including his last supper in the upper room, his suffering in the Garden of Gethsemane, which is all right there in Jerusalem, his betrayal by Judas, Peter's three denials, his trials, his scourging, and his crucifixion on Calvary. And the resurrection, the ascension period, takes place mostly here and a little bit up north, including uh, the garden tomb where Jesus speaks tenderly to Mary. Remember that? And the disciples don't really believe he's been resurrected and teaches the two men on the road to Emmaus and shows Thomas the wounds uh, from the crucifixion to move him from the doubter to a believer. Appears to more than 500 people, gives a great commission, and ascends from the Mount of Olives right up into heaven. Period number six. Uh, things begin to move now. Jesus is in heaven. He sends back the Spirit. Period 6 is the birth of the church to the Jews and takes place in Jerusalem and in the area right around it called Judea with the Holy Spirit coming on the day of Pentecost. And Peter preaches an amazing sermon resulting in 3,000 Jews from around the world who were there for the feast becoming believers in Jesus. And these new converts take the gospel. It's, it's really amazing all over the world as the church is birthed officially according to Christ's promise that I will build my church. And this period also includes the death of Ananias and Sapphira and the martyrdom of Stephen because of a sermon he preached. Period number seven, the spread of the church finally left Jerusalem and Judea and moves up north to this middle section called Samaria as the spread of the church to the Samaritan period and takes place in Samaria as the gospel spreads to the Samaritans, the half-Jews. And the Jews despised them, but never imagined that they would be invited into the same church because the gospel was for everybody. Then that period of time, that's where Philip is the primary evangelist to the Samaritans and even shares the gospel with the Ethiopian going back down to Africa. 
This is when Saul up here meets Christ in a supernatural experience on the road that leads to Damascus, and he begins his important ministry. Period number eight is when we leave finally this place called Israel, and we have the missionary journeys to the Gentiles, period. Paul and his friends take three important ministry journeys up from Jerusalem to Antioch on the coast, and then they go through this place we call Galatia in the Bible, this whole area you also know today as Asia Minor. They go all the way up here to Macedonia. They plant churches. They preach sermons. They teach. They have conflicts. It's really exciting reading. And it comes down into Achaia, and where he plants churches and disciples people in various cities. Many, many cities, actually. Maybe you've seen a map with the three missionary journeys of how Paul comes and goes to the various places. But three cities I want you to know is where Ephesus takes place, where the book of Ephesians, and he traveled up here a number of times, took the gospel over to Athens and the gospel over here to Corinth. And during these years of his missionary journeys, Paul writes most of his epistles to the churches. Well, it becomes more intense. And he keeps going back after each one of his missionary journeys, shares in Antioch, comes down in Jerusalem to the rest of the leaders, shares what God had done. But the opposition got so, so hot that they arrested Paul and they tried him and threw him, remember, into prison. And he's tried in Jerusalem and he's tried in other places. But eventually he's sent all the way over here to a place he actually dreamt of going, way up here to the city of Rome in Italy. And that's where he's imprisoned for a period of time. And then he's set free. And then he's brought back into prison one more time where he died. Well, during that period in prison, he writes his prison epistles. And some of the general epistles that we talked about in the books of the New Testament were written at that period. The global expansion period, period number 10, after Paul dies, the other apostles and the disciples take the gospel they all left from here, and they literally, if you have time sometime, you could research this yourself. They take the gospel, and they go in, in every single direction. They, they did exactly what Jesus said. He says, go into all the world. They didn't argue it. They said, that's what he said to do. We better get going, pack up our bags, and get going. And uh, tradition says nearly every single one of those apostles died as a martyr. And the beloved apostle, John, is very active in this period. And he writes 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and the Gospel of John, and is exiled on the, on the island of Patmos, where he records what Jesus shows him about the future in the book of Revelation. And what I want to do now is to begin to take a look of how it all fits together. This is the early life of Jesus. Well, wh where is that? Well, you know what? I need some help on this. If I could bring my, uh, my brother back out one more time, and maybe he can help me. And I'd like the four Gospels. Now, some people think um, if you were to take Matthew, it belongs here, because he talks about this, and Mark belongs here, and Luke belongs here, and John belongs here, and that's exactly not what happens. These four books tell the same story of the same person. And in a sense, it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And um, it's, I don't know how to stack them, actually. So we're just going to stick them, I guess we could stick them, I don't know, in the middle. But do you understand what I'm saying? That the Gospels tell you oh, the story of all this. And there's different parts of Christ's life and the different ones of the Gospel, but it's all the same story. So we've got to move all the way past this now into period number six. Period number six is the birth of the church with the Jews. And this is the spread of the church, and this is the missionary journeys. And what I want to do is kind of take the historical book that tells this story, which is the book of Acts. And if you don't mind, we've kind of divided it for you. And so in Acts chapter one through seven, that's where we have the birth of the church to the Jews. So if you want to read that story, that's where it takes place. Then everything changes in Acts chapter 8 through 12 with the spread of the church to the Samaritans. And you remember Philip. And then you move into number 8, which is Acts chapter 13 through 20, where the three missionary journeys are. Do you see how it kind of spreads out? It's, it's very helpful to see this. 
Then Paul's trials and imprisonment, this is the book of Acts, chapter 21 through 28. And then Acts ends, and the other apostles take over here in the global expansion to eternity. Do you have that? Now what we're going to do is to say, where do the Pauline epistles to churches take place? Period number eight is the missionary journeys to the Gentiles in Acts 13 to 20. Remember how many journeys he had? Three. On his first missionary journey, he wrote Galatians. So we're putting it out of order here for you. And we're doing it in the order in which he wrote them. This is the first letter Paul wrote, is Galatians. First missionary journey. On his first journey, he wrote one book, Galatians. On his second journey, he wrote two books, First and Second Thessalonians. So as you see, the books are out of order. Remember that? And on his third missionary journey, he wrote three books, First and Second Corinthians and Romans, in that order. First and Second Corinthians and Romans. So this is, look at all these church epistles. They're on his missionary journeys, like what you'd expect them to be. But then things changed with his trials and imprisonment, and it got, it got heavy. And you remember he's in the Roman imprisonment, then he's released from bonds for a period of time, and then after the book of Acts, he goes back into prison and he dies. But in this period right here, Paul's trials and imprisonment, you have on his first Roman imprisonment, he has Ephesians, and then Colossians, and then Philippians. These are commonly called the prison epistles. When you get to the global expansion of eternity, he's not writing any more books here because he's dead. <laughs> so go to the next section on our chart. First, we've done the Gospels at the beginning and Acts. Then we did the Pauline epistles to churches. So now we go across the top of that chart, the Pauline epistles to pastors. Are there any that took place in period one, two, three, four, five? Not one. Remember, Paul has to be converted. In six? Nope. In seven? Nope. In eight? Nope. In nine, yes. In his first Roman imprisonment, he wrote Philemon. Then he gets free for a period of time. He ministers around and he writes 1 Timothy and Titus. 1 Timothy and Titus. And as time passes, he gets thrown back into prison. And he really is close to this pastor friend of his called Timothy. And he writes him a second letter when he's in prison the second time right before he died in 2 Timothy, and then there's no more Pauline epistles because there's no more Paul left. Well, then what about the general epistles to the individuals? Any in the Gospels? Nope. What about period number six with the birth? Nope. Period seven, the spread? Nope. Eight, the missionary journeys to the Gentiles? Yeah. yeah this man wasn't on the trip with Paul, but he wrote the book of James. That's the earliest other book. Some people think it is the earliest book of the New Testament, is the book of James, took place here. So all the rest of the general epistles take place either here or here. In Paul's trials and imprisonment, in that same period of time, back in Jerusalem, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, and Hebrews was written. This is all about persecution and suffering. And so is Hebrews. And that's what the church was going through in this period. And these are powerful books, and I have a feeling that um, in the near future we're going to spend a lot of time in these books because what's taking place around the world. And this last section, the global expansion to eternity, this is when Jude, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, and Revelation takes place. Well, there you have it. Here we are in the last of the eight sessions, in the last segment in which we're going to take and put on top of the periods and the books and the places the people of the New Testament. Now I want you to see if you can anticipate where those ten people belong on each period. Obviously, we have in the first one that very famous couple, Joseph and Mary, with the coming of the shepherds and the wise men is the early life of Jesus. In the second one, it's the ministry of John the Baptist. Well, that's not difficult to figure out who the key person is. It's John the Baptist. What a picture with repent. And then you remember him pointing, behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. And then we have the hero, <laughs> Jesus himself, who came to serve and to sacrifice and is coming back to reign and to rule at the second coming. 
Number four, the trials and the crucifixion. Do you remember this? This is Judas with uh, his betrayed with a kiss and his, uh, his betrayal for the 30 pieces of silver. And period number five, the resurrection ascension. You remember who was having trouble believing that Jesus really could resurrect? It was doubting Thomas. Thomas, who just couldn't really believe, he became a doubter who became a believer because he reached forward and saw the hole in the side of Jesus where the spear was, the resurrection and the ascension. When you go to period number six, the birth of the church. Who was the key person when the church got birth? Who stood up and preached a sermon that 3,000 Jews ended up trusting Jesus as their Messiah? Yeah, Peter, the fisherman. Remember the flames that the Spirit came and he preached his great sermon at Pentecost. And then we move into period number seven, which is the spread of the church to the Samaritans. And this is our terrific evangelist, Philip, who was used by God to evangelize many of the Samaritans and eventually traveled and, and led a, an Ethiopian to the Lord by teaching about the book of Isaiah. Philip. Then we move into the missionary journeys of Paul to the Gentiles, and boy, that's got to be Paul, doesn't it? Quite a man, quite a leader, quite a uh, strong individual. Paul, remember, he was uh, called with the light on the road. He was a tent maker some of the time, and he was a church planter. He planted how many churches? We don't know exactly, but at least seven different churches he planted himself. It's truly something. What an illustration of what you can do when you're sold out for the Lord. And period number nine is Paul's trials and imprisonment. <laughs> These are the religious leaders, the high priest, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes, and the great opposition they had ever since Christ came on the scene and didn't kind of submit to them because he is the Lord and they weren't the Lord. And they continued against him and his kingdom all the way to the end. And they're the ones who uh, basically made sure that Paul got killed. And finally, we have number 10, the global expansion to eternity. And this is uh, the very close friend of Jesus named John, who was in prison on the island of Patmos and wrote the book of Revelation. Well, it's been a real pleasure for the entire Teach Every Nation team all over the world to prepare and to present to you the Survey of the Bible course. We hope that you've been amazed at how much you've learned today. Uh, maybe some of you feel like you received a Bible school education just in this course. C can you believe how much fun we had together? I'll never forget those second and third graders teaching us how to learn the people of the Bible. Well, I'd like to encourage you now to use this valuable course any, anywhere you can, in your church, in your Bible study, in a Bible college, or even with your family or neighborhood. And even though this course is coming to an end, we want to invite you to go deeper with us, to satisfy your hunger for, for more of God and more of His Word. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, these are massive rocks on the bottom of our arch. Let's summarize the book of Acts and the epistles through this map. We chose the menorah, and it has five parts that we're going to teach you. Part number one is the base. Ready? Here we go. The hero of everything is the star in the middle. Do you have them together in your own mind? Joseph and Mary, John the Baptist, and we have the hero, Jesus himself, who came to serve and to sacrifice. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, amen and amen.